Hello, Prairie View students, families, staff, and friends. We're reading the Snow Treasure. We're on chapter 29. Did you guess where I was yesterday? Not everybody knows that room, but that's the clerical room. That's where the teacher's mailboxes are and also their um, workroom. So chapter 29. The soldier came inside and shut the door and leaned against it. Peter looked hard at him. He could see so little from the streak of light that, from the window, but there was something familiar. The soldier was Jan Lassik, the Pole. But no, that couldn't be. Jan was on Uncle Victor's boat in the Snake. Peter had seen him there that day. Shh. Jan put his finger to his lips. From his tunic pocket, he dug a scrap of paper. It was so dark, Peter had to go over and over it before he could make it out. It was a note from Uncle Victor. Peter read, Jan Lassik is risking his liberty and perhaps his life for you. Follow him at all costs, wherever he goes. On that depends your safety and his. There was no signature, but Peter knew well his uncle's bold handwriting. He nodded to show he understood. Jan kept listening for a sound. What was he waiting for? Peter dared not ask. From afar, Peter could make out a kind of din, a rattle like knives and forks and pans and mugs. When the rattle became much louder, Jan seemed satisfied. He looked out the door, he stepped outside and closed it. When he came back into the cell, there was a high excitement in his whisper. Come now, he said, quickly. They were out in the hall. Jan stopped to turn the key in the lock outside the door where Peter had been kept prisoner. Into his pocket went the key. And now Peter could hear the tramp, tramp, tramp of boots. It came from a distant end of the barracks, but it grew much louder with each step. We'll have to run, Jan whispered. All the time the sound of the marching soldiers came closer. They seemed to be coming down a hall that would meet the corridor at right angles and now Peter could hear nothing because of the sound in his own ears. He wanted to run in the opposite direction. Why go this way? He wondered. We'll only run into them. The marching men must be nearing the corner but Jan only kept going faster towards them. Uncle Victor said he was to follow Jan at all costs. So behind him ran the breathless frightened Peter and now on the right Peter saw a door through it, Jan pulled him. There was just enough time to close it softly. The Germans were turning the corner, as Peter could tell by the sound of their steps on the other side of the door. Peter fell into the wet snow of the beach. They were outside the barracks and, for the moment, safe. Jan flattened himself against the wall of the building, and Peter stood up beside him. The shadow of the barracks hid them. The rain was loud on the crusted snow. We're lucky. The sentry was going to, up the beach, not down, Jan whispered. Otherwise, he'd have seen the light when we opened the door. Peter felt a throbbing in his ears. He tried not to pant, but his breath was loud. Now there was another soft pod, 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 more marching. Against the snow, they could see a dark figure. It was the sentry returning. He walked up to a point on a line with the door, the very door over which he stood guard. He was not ten feet away from Jan and Peter, were flattened against the wall. Slap, slap, slap. His heavy leather mittens thumped his shoulders. He changed his rifle from one side to the other and changed it back again. Then he turned and began goose-stepping back to the direction he had come. Jan tugged at Peter's sleeve. It was now or never, he seemed to say. Peter was not prepared for what happened next. Jan led him down the beach to the very edge of the fjord and then right into the water itself. The cold water bit his body. The breath left him. He didn't think he could stand another minute of it. He wanted to run back to the beach, but Jan kept waiting out and Peter, remembering the warning in the note, found himself following him. It seems forever. These few minutes they waited in the water, and now Jan was swimming, and Peter found himself doing the same. 
but you couldn't swim in that cold, close to frozen water. You, you had no strength. Peter felt the breath going out of him. But somehow or other, it seemed better to freeze to death out there than to stay in those barracks and wait for no one know what. Then there was a numbness over him. He closed his eyes. He must be dreaming, for nothing like this could be happening in real life. A hand reached out and grabbed his arm, and he was pulled into a boat. Someone put a flask to his mouth and told him to drink. But the fiery stuff made him sputter, and it ran down over his chin. A heavy coat was put over him, and a pair of arms were cr cradling him. Rolls, Uncle Victor's mate, was holding him. There was another sodden mass on the bottom of the boat. It was Jan Lassik. Peter heard them say his name, but now he found he was beyond caring about anything. The boat, he knew, was the Clang Pearson's lifeboat. Strong arms were pulling it towards the fishing smack. That's the end of that chapter. One more to go. Have a great night.